So let's talk about the different types of differential equations. In particular, how is dy dx equal to 3x different from d squared y dx squared equal to negative x? So let's start with a definition, namely what the order of a differential equation is. So the order of a differential equation is the highest power derivative in the equation. So for example, dy dx equal to 3x is a first order equation. In contrast, d squared y dx squared equal to negative x, that's actually second order because it has a second order derivative. dy dx squared equal to 2 is actually still first order because it only has a first derivative in there, even though it, there's a square in there. It's still only first order. This expression, which I'm not going to try and uh, say, but you can read it, um, is actually third order, uh, a third order differential equation, and so on and so forth. Another useful definition is that of a linear differential equation. So we say that a differential equation is linear if the equation itself is linear in the function that we want to find and the function's derivatives. Again, it's useful to have a couple examples to look at this. So for example, dy dx is equal to x. Well, obviously this is linear. It's linear in everything. It's also first order. dy dx is equal to x squared. Well, this is linear and first order still. Uh, dy dx is equal to y squared is actually nonlinear, but first order. So the nonlinearity comes from the y squared, but it's still a first order derivative. If we do d squared y dx squared is equal to minus y times x, this is actually linear and it's a second order equation. So we have a second order derivative, but everything is still linear in y. But if you had d squared y dx squared is equal to sine of y plus x, this is nonlinear and second order. So hopefully that gives you a sense of the, uh, what linear and the order of a differential equation is. So a really important fact is that the general solution to an nth order linear differential equation has n independent constants. We're not going to prove that here. You can take a differential equations course and prove it, but instead we're just going to use this very important fact. So as an example, again, dy dx is equal to y. Well, the solution here is y is equal to c e to the x, and this general solution only has one constant in it. By contrast, d squared y dx squared is equal to negative x. The general solution there is a cosine x plus b sine of x. And these constants a and b are two independent constants. So second order equation, you get two independent constants. So note that in order to determine these independent constants in your general expression, you need the same number of initial conditions as you do constants. So again, example with a first order equation, the one we've been using, dy dx is equal to y. It's first order, so it has one constant. The y is equal to c e to the x for the general solution. Since there's one constant, we need one initial condition. And in particular, if we impose the initial condition that y is 10 at x equal to 0, then our constant is just 10, c. That determines our constant. If we look at this other equation, d squared y is equal to minus x, sorry, d squared y dx squared is equal to minus x. This is second order, it has two constants. So as we already said, the general solution is a sine of x plus b cosine of x. So in order to determine a and b, we need two initial conditions. So they could be that y at x equal to zero is zero and y prime at x equal to zero is one. Those could be two initial conditions that we need to specify. So what are a and b given these initial conditions? Well, we just impose each initial condition individually. So at x equal to zero, um, the only term that contributes is the term with b. And in order for the initial condition to be zero, b must be zero. So we're left with y is equal to a sine of x. Uh, y prime is then a cosine of x, so we can use that in our next uh, initial condition. And using that initial condition, we find that a is actually equal to one at x equal to zero. And so the final specific solution, uh, given these two initial conditions from our general solution, is just y is equal to sine of x. 
So we see that for a second order differential equation, we had two arbitrary constants and we needed two initial conditions to find those constants.